Hi, today we want to make a cheap washing machine smart. This means we want to see its current state on our smartphone. For example, if it's finished washing. And also we take a look how to start and stop it remotely. My washing machine has a program dialer, a start stop button and three status LEDs for door engaged, washing and finished or paused. We don't want to tinker inside of it if it's not necessary. So let's see what we can do here. We could sense the light from the LEDs using photoresistors and even push the button using a servo motor. I think there is no need to automate the dialer. Since you have to load the washing machine manually, you can choose the program directly. Pushing the button can be used to start and stop it remotely. For example, if you want to start it later at a specific time or stop it if it's too noisy. Let's begin with the LEDs since reading them brings the highest benefit and is quite easy to make. We will be using photoresistors. As the name already says, they act like resistors which change their value when illuminated. In the dark they have high resistance up to hundreds of kilo ohms, illuminated down to few kilo ohms. They are also available as modules with a potentiometer to adjust the sensitivity and return a digital signal. I think we can go cheaper and less bulky with just an additional resistor. We can build a simple voltage divider by putting them between VCC and ground and connecting a digital input pin of the microcontroller just between them. The voltage at the input pin will be somewhere in between VCC and ground depending on the resistor values. Simplified it can be calculated like this. Because of the range of the photoresistor we will be using 10 kilo ohms as the static resistors. Let's say the photoresistor reads 90 kilo ohm because it's dark around. The voltage at the pin will be 1 tenth of VCC. Let's assume the photoresistor reads 5 kilo ohm when it's illuminated. This will result in 2 thirds of VCC at the pin. The digital pins have high and low thresholds. If the voltage is above a certain level, which is often a little above half of VCC, the pin reads high. If the voltage is below the low threshold, it reads low. The range in between is uncertain. We should be safe in both cases. We will test it and if it doesn't work with 10k ohm we can change the resistor to another value. We will be using the ESP based Wemos D1 Mini. If you are new to my channel you will notice it's my favorite microcontroller. We set up the three voltage dividers using the photoresistors and the 10k ohm resistors. We tap in between each pair and connect to the pins D5, D6, D7. To be able to push the button we also connect a small servo motor to ground 5V and to pin D3 for the PWM signal. We take 5V since we don't want to overload the small 3.3V regulator and the servo will also accept the 3.3V signal anyways. For the software part we will use Mongoose OS with MQTT. If you don't have an MQTT broker yet, check out my last video. Mongoose can be easily set up. We download it from the homepage and run it. Connect the Wemos to the computer and select the port. Select the image for our microcontroller and flash it. When done we enter Wi-Fi credentials of our home network. The Wemos will now connect automatically. To use MQTT we head over to configuration, enable MQTT, enter the address of our MQTT broker, username and password. Save configuration. Now the Wemos will also connect to the MQTT broker on startup. Going back to device files, the init.js is the JavaScript code which runs on startup. We can replace the example with our code. You can find my code on the project page which is also linked in the description. Let me explain what the code roughly does. This imports the used libraries. Here we can find all the values that we can configure. The MQTT topic names, the pins and the servo options. The code starts at the end. We attach an event handler to the MQTT. It is called whenever something happens. We start our work when the connection to the broker is established. If it's reconnecting, we simply resend the current LED states. If it's the first time, we subscribe to the topic controlling the servo and run setup. In the setup function, we attach to each photoresistor pin an interrupt 
which is called when the pin level changes. The interrupt function reads the pin value. If it's different, then it publishes the new value to the corresponding topic. The server is controlled by this function, which simply moves to the target position, waits, moves back, and resets the server topic value. We save and reboot and are ready to go. To see the published values and control the server, we need another MQTT client. I'm using this simple app MQTT Dash. There we add our MQTT broker, username, password. And then add the topics. We have the server control, add washing machine slash servo. Then we have the three LEDs at washing machine slash LED1. These are read only, so disable the publish there. Let's test our setup. First of all, we can check the resistances of the photoresistors. Around 70 kilo ohms when the LED is off and around 7 when the LED is on. Now the voltage. 1 volt when off and 2.2 volts when on. Let's test if the MQTT triggers. Seems to work. Now let's move the servo. Works as well. We can solder everything and also use some heat shrink to prevent shorts. To attach it conveniently to the washing machine I designed a small case and 3D printed it. But duct tape would probably also do. and put double-sided foamy tape on it. This is really sticky and will not detach from any vibrations. I put this in place such that we still can see the LEDs a bit. It works! Now we can also name the widgets accordingly. Even the small servo manages to start and stop the machine. The 3D models and links to the parts used here can also be found on the project page linked below. Let's do an everyday test. I have important laundry to make. different apps which can set off notifications, so you don't have to constantly check the phone. If you know another good MQTT app, please tell us in the comments below. The button pusher can also be transferred to other applications, like turning old school lights on and off, unlocking doors, turning on the coffee machine in the morning, launching intercontinental ballistic missiles and much more. To be able to start the washing machine at a specific time, we need to dive into Node Red, which is even pre installed on our Raspberry. We will do that next week when we also start to build a sophisticated solar powered weather station. Subscribe to not miss it, check out my other videos, and consider supporting me on Patreon. Bye!